Hello everyone, welcome back to Cracksuit. In today's video, I'm back with something special, an in-depth and honest review of the latest Project Elixir 4.1 ROM. This ROM is packed with cool features and customizations that I'll be showcasing in today's video. Also, I've got some exclusive features straight from the developers that I'm so excited to share with all of you. We'll explore all the new additions, look into various customizations, check out different benchmark scores and look for any potential bugs that might pop up while using this room. So get ready for my in-depth review of the latest Project Elixir 4.1 room and also show some love by watching, sharing and subscribing to my channel. So let's get started. About phone. This is the newest version of Project Elixir version 4.1 and it looks different from before. I have put this ROM on my Redmi Note 9 Pro Max phone also known as MI8 all. It's running on the newest Android system Android 14 and it has the latest security updates from February 5, 2024 which are important to keep the phone safe. When we talk about the kernel which is like the core of the ROM, this ROM uses the Forza kernel. Exclusive features now let's explore the fantastic features that set this room apart. Remember, these special additions come directly from the developer and are exclusively available to premium or early access users. If you want to enjoy these amazing benefits and more, make sure to check out their official websites. One standout feature in this update is the lock screen clocks. You have the opportunity to choose from a variety of captivating styles including custom designs and depth clocks. With a total of 14 unique lock screen clocks to choose from, each one adds a special touch to your phone, making it look truly distinctive and impressive compared to others. Another remarkable feature is the depth clock option. With approximately 26 different depth clocks to choose from, you can customize your phone to reflect your personal style. These features are not only enjoyable to use but also make your phone stand out in a crowd, adding a sense of uniqueness and charm. Antutu Benchmark Score Alright, let's take a closer look at how well this ROM performs in the Antutu Benchmark Test. The score we got this time is 389067. Now comparing this with the previous version Project Elixir 4.0 which scored slightly higher at 389498 we see a small drop in the score. But here's the thing, despite this tiny difference in score, the performance of the ROM remains consistent across both versions. So even though the numbers may vary a bit, you can expect similar performance from this update. Geekbench 6 score Now let's check out how this ROM fares on the Geekbench 6 test. I have already run the test and looking at the history, the score for single core is 756 while for multi core it's 1864. Comparing these scores with the previous build, Project Elixir 4.0 running on Android 14 which had a single core score of 755 and a multi core score of 1844. We can see that this time the current version of Project Elixir has slightly higher scores than the previous one. Kernel SU Support Next, let's see if this ROM supports Kernel SU by default. I have already installed the Kernel SU APK and upon opening it, we can see that this ROM doesn't support Kernel SU out of the box. However, you can easily get Kernel SU support by installing a compatible kernel for your phone that supports Kernel SU launcher if you have seen my detailed review of project Elixir 4.0 rom you'd know it came with pixel launcher as the default which had limited customization options on the home screen but now with the latest project Elixir 4.1 it features a launcher launcher which is fantastic because it offers a tons of customization options when you dive into its home screen setting, you will find many options including something I have never seen in other rooms. The availability of countless fonts. You can scroll endlessly through the fonts and they just keep appearing which totally blows my mind. What do you think about this addition? Let me know in the comments below. Similarly, this launcher also includes a handy hide app feature which is super useful for users but unfortunately app lock feature is still unavailable. 
Moreover, you'll find gesture settings here where you can customize actions like double tap, swipe up and swipe down. What's really cool is that you can assign seven different activities to each of these gestures. For example, instead of just putting the screen to sleep with a double tap, now you can even open and desired app just by double tapping on the screen, which is pretty awesome. Wallpaper and styles. Now let's explore the wallpapers and styles section where you'll find some unique Alexar wallpapers along with other options. Additionally, in the lock screen section, there are custom clock options available for everyone. You can customize these clocks to your liking and if you find one you like, you can apply it to your lock screen as well. Battery settings. When I checked the battery settings, I didn't notice any differences from the previous version. It still has the same features like battery uses details, turning on the light when charging, battery saver mode, battery optimization, monitoring battery temperature, and the option for a battery widget. However, one thing that I'm a bit disappointed about is the absence of the extreme battery setting option. This feature is really important for maximizing battery life on smartphones and unfortunately it's missing in this room. Cloned apps. Another handy feature that's still present in this update is the clone feature, just like in the previous version. With this feature, you can make a copy of any app you want. This allows you to use the app as a separate instance where you can log in with another account or someone else's account. It's great for keeping personal and work accounts separate for managing multiple accounts for different purposes. Island notification. In Project Alexar 4.1, there's a new feature called Island Notification within the Essence settings. It displays a heads up notification in a dynamic island style, which is inspired by iOS. With this feature, you can quickly answer phone calls by tapping on the island notification, swiftly reject phone calls by long pressing the island notification, expand the island notification preview by long pressing it. This island notification features allows you to perform these actions easily and I personally find it quite useful. Hopefully you'll enjoy using it too. Miscellaneous settings. In Project Elixir 4.1, there's the Essence setting where you can customize various aspects including some new additions in the miscellaneous settings compared to its previous version. Here's what you'll find. Advanced restart. Makes it easier to restart into the bootloader and recovery menu. Ignore Windows Secure Flag allows you to take screenshots and do screen recordings on any application even those with secure flags. Make heads up less annoying helps reduce the annoyance of heads up notification. In call vibration option customize vibration setting during call. Game space options provides a dedicated space for gaming a feature carried over from the previous build. In this latest build, two new options have been added. Volume panel. When enabled, it shows the volume panel on the left side of the screen instead of the usual right side. Unlock higher FPS in games. Enables higher FPS in games, enhancing the gaming experience on your phone. Additionally, while the unlimited photo storage option may not be explicitly present, the feature is enabled and provided by default in this room. Bugs. Now let's talk about something that's both interesting and a little worrying, bugs. We'll see if there are new problems in this update and if the old ones have been fixed. In the previous build, there was an issue with the back gesture haptic not working even when enabled. Surprisingly, in this current build, the back gesture haptic is working even when the option is disabled. It's an interesting twist. Moving on to haptics, I found another issue related to it. This time with the brightness slider in Essence setting, there's an option for haptic feedback for the brightness slider, but it does not provide haptic feedback when adjusting the brightness. However, they have fixed the issues with haptics on the keyboard in this version. I also noticed that while almost all header images work in the quick setting panel, three of them didn't seem to work on my device. I tried various images including local ones but they didn't apply to the header section. It seems there might be a bug related to this feature. Similarly, the hide QS in secure lock screen option isn't working even when enabled. Additionally, the clock font size option in quick settings isn't functioning properly either. It seems there are some issues with the quick settings option inside the Essence setting. 
I request the respective developer to address these issues in the next update as soon as possible. Hopefully, we'll see a new and bug-free project Alexa room in the future. Conclusion in conclusion, we have covered all the details about the latest project Alexa 4.1 room. After using it for several days, I feel confident in recommending it for long term use. The room offers a user friendly interface, stable and smooth performance and extensive customizations. While there are some minor issues with quick settings, customizations and haptics, these shouldn't significantly impact your overall user experience. If the mentioned bugs don't bother you, then this room can definitely serve you as your daily driver. However, if those features are essential for you, you may want to consider skipping this room. Regarding some reports of unusual behavior like network issues and video playback problems on platforms like YouTube, there are a few potential solutions. You can try disabling Google Assistant features like Hey Google. Ensure you have flashed the latest firmware when installing the room. Or as a last resort, perform a clean flash of the room. Personally, I initially experienced video lagging on YouTube, possibly due to a dirty flash of the room. After performing a clean flash, I haven't encountered those issues and I have been using this room for over a week now without any significant bugs. And that wraps up this video. I hope you found my in-depth and honest review of this Project Alexa 4.1 room helpful and informative. If you like our video, then don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below, share this video and subscribe to Cracksway's YouTube channel. Also, thank you for watching this video till the end. Bye.